Today we're going to talk about whether this $250 vinyl setup can compete with this $4,000 vinyl setup. So sit down and grab a cup of coffee and let's compare this $250 Audio-Technica turntable to a $4,000 Michelle engineering turntable. Mm -hmm. Big thank you to today's sponsor. It's been a long time, but Sith Audio finally got out of negotiations with the cheap audio man lawyers, and they're sponsoring the channel again. Sith Audio, audiophile flashlights. When you're looking for stuff behind your rack and only the best audiophile equipment will do, you need to get yourself a Sith Audio audiophile flashlight. Guaranteed to have audiophile lumens, brightness, shining in your dusty rat's nest of cables, looking for that stylus cover that you dropped. $699.99. Sith Audio audiophile flashlights available on sithaudio.net. Are you into vinyl? Do you want to get a better turntable? Well, you should go over to Michelle Engineering and check out their turntables. It doesn't even include a tone arm or a cartridge. Michelle sent me out their Techno Deck. It is their entry level turntable. They have some very good looking turntables and eye watering prices to go along with them. I talked to them a while ago at Axpona and I told them, listen, my channel is for pretty much entry level audio files, people just trying to get into the hobby. And they said, you know what? No pressure, check it out, make a video if you want to. And so here we are. Had the techno deck running in my setup for a while, but I didn't figure you'd be interested in watching a turntable review on basically a $4,000 turntable all in. What I did think you might be interested in is comparing a $250 turntable to a $4,000 turntable. Now. Since the Techno Deck does not come with a tone arm or a cartridge, they included their T3 tone arm, which comes in around $700. I had the Goldring E4 cartridge, which I installed on the Techno Deck. I also had the Goldring Oroika HX moving coil cartridge. I've never had a moving coil cartridge, so I was very excited to play around with it. This comes in, I think, around eight or $900. E4 comes in around $400. So let's get this out of the way first. I actually preferred the cheaper E4 cartridge to the more expensive moving coil cartridge. Not to say that there's anything wrong. Not to say there's anything wrong with it. Not to say there's anything wrong with the moving coil cartridge. It just wasn't my personal preference when it comes to Sonics. The Oroika <laughs> HX was way more leaned back, way more rich, less revealing than the E4. And for me personally, I like clarity. I like cleanliness. I like some punch. Now there was a lot of punch on the Oroika, but not necessarily as much detail as I would have liked. Not to say that you wouldn't like it. If you like something like the Nagaoka MP110 cartridge, you'll probably love the Oroika. So I did run it with the Oroika, but not for long. I put the E4 on there, a little bit more my speed. So that brought the turntable down, well, about $400. So now we're in at $3,400, $3,500. The thing about it is though, the Michelle, of course, does not have an internal phono preamp. So I added the Project 2 box, hold on. S2, it's a $500 phono preamp, can take everything from moving magnets, of course, to moving coil cartridges, which it should for $500, has some tubes on top. Very good, my reference phono preamp. Uh, uh, uh. I compared it to, get ready for this, the Audio-Technica AT-LP120X USB-BK direct drive turntable. This comes in at $350, but I actually got it on sale for $250 during the last Amazon Prime Day. I'd never had an Audio-Technica in. Audio-Technica has no idea who I am, and probably if they did, they wouldn't want to send me a turntable anyway. So I figured if I want to listen to an Audio-Technica, I better buy one. It has an included phono preamp. It comes with the AT95, I think, cartridge. Yes, comes with the Audio-Technica ATVM95E, which is about a $70 cartridge if you buy it separately. Direct drive means it doesn't have a belt. 
exterior to the turntable. The Michelle is belt driven, but it also comes with a motor that doesn't even touch the plinth. It's actually separated from the plinth by one millimeter. Well, you have to separate it out, but you should separate it by one millimeter, which is pretty cool. So why is it fair that I'm comparing a turntable that has a $400 cartridge, which costs more than the other turntable by itself? Well, because I just did a video about comparing a $17 DVD player to a $600 CD player because on their own, they sound vastly different. However, when you use them as transports into the same digital to analog converter, things got way more even. What I really should have done, I just gotten two E4s and put one on the Audio-Technica and run them both through the Project Phono preamp. I didn't do that though. Let's talk about build quality. Audio-Technica, completely made out of plastic but it has, it's pretty good plastic and it's actually pretty heavy duty. Compared to a lot of the other turntables I've had in from Fluence and U-Turn, if you're using weight as which one is best, well then the Audio-Technica would be the best. However, the plastic, while better than some project entry level offerings, isn't great. It feels like a $250 turntable. Has a start stop function because it's direct drive. Can do three different speeds. 33, 45, and 78. Also has variable speed control on there if for whatever reason you want to control speed. And it has a strobe whoop, 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 to make sure that things are going as fast as they should be. The Michelle's plinth is made out of some type of, I don't know what it is. It's good, whatever it is, but it's got a high polish finish on it. And even when I look at their website listing, it doesn't really tell you what the plinth is made out of. They say the platter is impedance matched and chosen, chosen, my goodness, easy for me to say, for its vibration dampening characteristics because sonically it is very similar to vinyl. Okay, so I don't really care what these turntables are made out of. I care about how they sound. The Michel build quality wins. It's way, way, way better than the Audio-Technica. Has like this cool bearing to where you pour oil lubrication into like this little well. And then you put like this sleeve over the top of it, which has a literal ball in it. And apparently it sucks up the oil into it. And when I was setting this up, I was setting it up with my stepson. And we were just, you know, give it a little spin kept going and going and going and going so it was pretty impressive the build quality on the michelle is shockingly awesome the tone arm which comes separately is also shockingly awesome how well it's built tracking force adjustments on this i mean it really feels like a premium product most of the time when i get something in and it's 700 dollars, i don't really feel like it's worth 700 dollars the tone arm alone, when I'm messing around with it, I'm like, yeah, this is a $700 turn arm, tone, tone arm. <sighs> Sonically, I listened to Blackened by Metallica. The special edition Walmart green version, and it's actually recorded really, 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 really well. If you're a fan of Metallica, get the Walmart exclusive green edition of And Justice For All. It's fantastic. You can hear it. Sonically, so let's go internal phono preamp on the Audio-Technica, okay? In a vacuum, by itself, it sounds all right. A little bit focused in the middle, actually sounds like the first edition of And Justice For All played on cassette in a car stereo. That's not that great with no subwoofer. The low end is pushed up, the high end is pushed down, so you have the middle part. Kind of think a TV, like an old school TV, tube TV, just the middle part. When I ran it into the phono, internal phono preamp of the Emotiva PT2, which by the way, running all of these into the PT2, which is a preamp from Emotiva, then going into the A1 monoblocks out to the B2 Plus from Emotiva. All Emotiva, I like Emotiva, it's very good. That whole setup only comes in just north of $2,000 with the speakers. So I had like $4,000 worth of turntable on a $2,100 system. But it doesn't matter because I could still hear a huge difference. Okay, internal phono preamp of the PT2. 
better, more dynamic. So I would say at the bare minimum, if you're looking at the AT120 Alphabet Soup turntable from Audio-Technica, please don't use the internal phono preamp. It's not good, not good at all. So then I was like, well, let's do apples to apples, at least with the phono preamp. So I connected the Audio-Technica to the Project Tube Box S2. Yeah, that's right. And I got even better again, but it did not match the sonic characteristics of the Techno Deck with the T3 tone arm running the gold ring, <laughs> gold ring E4. Man, you're gonna see a lot of bloopers in today's video. Even more dynamics cleaned up a little bit in the bass and the mid range. Top end was a little bit more believable. With the included phono preamp, it was, I can't even describe it because the top end was really rolled off. And then what was there was hissy, not representative of what the music actually sounded like. The PT2's internal phono preamp, a lot better, added in more bass. S2 cleaned up the bass, cleaned up the mid-range, and added a little bit of highs back in. So, in this instance, a $500 Phono preamp did have a significant impact on the sonics of the Audio-Technica. Let's talk about what the Techno Deck sounded like. Well, I'll put it to you this way. When I got the Techno Deck set up initially, and I used the E4 cartridge initially on it, I didn't do much for about three hours except for listening to vinyl. And that is always the best barometer of how good a product actually is. When it completely sucks me out of doing my job and then I just get into listening to music and enjoying it. That is the ultimate compliment that a product can get. And that's exactly what the Techno Deck did with the E4 cartridge on the T3 tone arm. Now, not everybody, most people, the majority of people are not gonna be able to afford a $2,000 turntable with a $700 cartridge, no, $700 tone arm, with a $400 cartridge into a $500 phono preamp. Most people won't be able to get that. Totally get it. The music was better than digital. It was so much better. I can't really describe why. Super dynamic, super clean, super three-dimensional, super airy. Now, granted, I'm also listening to this on $400 speakers. So you can imagine if you have a really good set of speakers. Now, I think the Emotiva B2 Plus probably punch about twice, if not three times above their weight class or their price. But all that aside, it was still the best vinyl experience I've ever had. It was just so good. Ironically, it was better on the E4 than it was on the Eroica for my personal listening preferences. The Michel Techno Deck is a stripped down luxury turntable, entry level luxury turntable, if that's even a thing. It's family owned company out of the UK. And actually I talked to the grandson, I think of the founder at Expona. It's a great story. $2,000 is really expensive for a turntable. I think though, if you're super into vinyl and you want something that is special, then take a look at Michel Engineering. I'm not saying to run out and buy this thing and it's gonna change your life. But what I am saying is there's, whatever they're doing, it makes a big difference. Most of the sonic characteristic of a turntable comes down to the cartridge and the phono preamp. So one could argue that if I take the E4 from Goldring and put it on the Audio-Technica, things might be a little bit more evenly matched. And they probably would be evenly matched, at least more evenly matched. As it sits right now, though, this is the best turntable experience I've had. It should be. It should be a lot. Is it 15 times better than the Audio-Technica? <sighs> Yes. I'll put it to you this way. If I just had the Audio-Technica, even running it through the Project 2 Box S2, I wouldn't be grabbing vinyl. If I'm listening to the Techno Deck, I'm pretty much only listening to vinyl all the time and I'm not getting anything done. 
the fern is dying, the dog's not being watered or fed, and the kids aren't being picked up from school because I'm just listening to vinyl on the techno deck. I don't even, I don't have an affiliate relationship with Michelle. So if you buy this turntable, I don't get a nickel. What I will say is if you can't afford the techno deck, you should look really hard at this E4 because it is spectacular. Very similar to the Ortofon 2 and Blue, but it just seems like it's livelier in every sense of the word. More bass, but yet not covering up any mid-range. More highs, but not sibilant or inorganic or sounding weird. It's $400, but I think if you try this and put it on whatever your turntable rig is, I think you're gonna hear a big difference and I think you're gonna like it if you are into kind of that 2M blue sound, which is a very clean yet dynamic sound. I'm really impressed with the E4. So the takeaway here is if you already have a turntable or if you're looking to get into vinyl and you want a really, really good experience, you can get a table from Fluence. You can get a table from U-Turn. You can get the Michel. You can even get a table from Audio Technica. But what I would do is try to save up, get the E4, have fun with it, and then save up and get the Project 2 Box S2. Because that combo together comes in at $900. But I will say that these two these two products the two box and the e4 have played the they play the they play more of a significant impact in the sound than the actual turntable does but whatever michelle is doing with the isolation it's got sorbitol feet on the bottom you can level it out just perfectly everything is top notch Whatever they're doing is working because it's spectacular. And if you're looking to buy something from a family-run company out of the UK, it's going to be something different. Most people aren't going to have this. Then you should really consider the Techno Deck too.